Now, let me make sure that you understand Revelation 4.4. 4. So Revelation 4.4, 4, again, I am not sure who these 24 elders are. I told you that. The theory is 12, uh, 12 tribes of Israel and 12 apostles of the church. And I explained to you that usually this would be a representative of their own people. So in other words, Jews and the Christian church are the 24 elders. But whoever these 24 are, there is absolutely no doubt that they will have to include Christians. The reason why is because when you read verse 4, I mentioned to you, these were people clothed in white raiment. They had on their heads crowns of gold. And that perfectly matched with Revelation 2 and 3, where God was speaking to the church and telling them to keep their garments white, to make sure that no one takes away their crown. So these 24 elders, there is absolutely no doubt that Christians will have to be included in here. But specifically who the 24 elders are, I'm not sure. The best guess so far would be 12 apostles of the church and 12 tribes of Israel. Why is that? Because these people are the ones who match up with the people who say that we will reign forever and ever in New Jerusalem. And when New Jerusalem comes down, the Bible says that in it are the names of what? Twelve apostles and twelve tribes of Israel. So that makes a lot of sense. Not only that, the word elder would be found with two groups of people throughout your Bible. They are the church, see elders of the church, and then referring to the twelve tribes of Israel, see the twelve elders. So that seems to be the best guess from what you look at. All right, now let's look at verse 5. So notice right here, and, excuse me, I'm reading at chapter 5. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Okay, so remember, this is verse by verse Bible study. So please pay attention to every word that I try to explain over here. That way you can see if the teachings match up with how I explain it. You got to look at your Bible. Don't just watch me online and click, click, click and say, oh, that's interesting and throw in a comment. You got to look at the verse yourself and see if how I'm explaining matches up with Scripture. So out of the throne, what? Proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. So you see a lot of things coming out of the throne over here. So it's lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Now what's very interesting is that this seems to match up with the previous verses we looked at. When God was speaking in his voice out of heaven, people mistaked it as what? Thunder or lightning, which is extremely interesting. And then we saw some things about the rapture of the church. But anyway, let's exclude that part. There were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. Oh, wait a minute. So now we have seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are what? The seven spirits of God. Now, remember, who are the seven spirits of God right here? So this is referring to the Holy Spirit. This is referring to God. The proof text was given at chapter 1 as well as chapter 5. And verse 6. If you look at chapter 5, verse 6, notice that Jesus Christ entails all those seven spirits. And the reason why I already explained to you before is that if you look at chapter 2 and chapter 3, each spirit, seven, was speaking to seven churches because the Holy Spirit, uh, he does not have to be only in one location. The Holy Spirit is everywhere. The Holy Spirit is inside you, yes? So think about it. So then there's like what? More than 20, 30, 40, 50, or whoever around this room and around the world of Christians where the Holy Spirit is everywhere. That's why it's not a problem for him to be at seven places at once, like the seven lamps over here. So there's no doubt this is referring to God Almighty, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. Now these seven lamps, what you're going to notice is that this can match up with Isaiah chapter 11 with the seven attributes of God. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. So a lot of people mention that the seven spirits of God are referring to these seven spirits at Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. The simple answer to this is that this all entails Jesus Christ. 
God the Holy Spirit. And it consists of seven attributes within them. Because God has many attributes, obviously. So there's your simple answer. Look at verse 2. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. So notice right here that you'll notice seven mentioned right here. So you'll notice that spirit is mentioned. Uh, let's see right here. So notice right here at verse 2, you'll see seven mentions over here. Spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding, spirit of counsel, spirit of might, spirit of knowledge, spirit of the fear of the Lord. So you'll notice right over here that we get seven total and notice, look at the previous verse. Who is this speaking about? At the previous verse, verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. That's Jesus Christ. So see, it matched up with Revelation chapter 5 that the seven spirits of God are referring to the Lamb, Jesus Christ, and that it also matched up with Revelation 2 and 3, the Spirit is speaking to the seven churches. So notice right here, this is all the same right here. Why? Because there is no doubt, this is proof again of the Trinity. This is proof again that God the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, is referring to one and the same God. Whether you like it or not. All right, let's return to our main text. Now, can I tell you something very interesting over here? I kind of indicated it before. Remember... At verse 2, Revelation 4, verse 2, the Spirit is all of a sudden up in heaven, right? You'll notice that. The Spirit is all of a sudden up in heaven, but at chapter 2 and chapter 3, the Spirit is down on the earth with the churches. Why? Because notice that there has to be a pre-tribulation rapture. See, they are not down there anymore. So you'll notice right here that all of a sudden now, you get the seven spirits of God over here. But wait a minute. Weren't they originally down here on the earth? Remember Revelation, I'm not going to read it again, but Revelation chapter 1. And then look at chapter 2 and 3. What, the seven spirits are down here, weren't they? At chapter 1, look at the last two, three verses of chapter 1, if you don't believe me. And then look at chapter 2 and 3. Every time he's speaking to each of the seven churches, each spirit is talking. Right. See, so they were down here on the earth. And then all of a sudden, they're up there. And then all of a sudden, you see what? 24 elders, who is similar with the seven churches down there up here. So you got the churches who have share similarity with the 24 elders, right? About the white garments, about the crowns. And then you see the seven spirits down here, and then all of a sudden they're up there. Now, look, I'm not going to say it clearly because you might throw a fit, but I think that you're catching the pieces of the puzzle together. What do you think this means? I don't have to tell you then. What do you think this means that they were once down here, but all of a sudden they're up there, and this is before, 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 B-E-F-O-R-E, -E, not after the tribulation, but before the tribulation at Revelation chapter 6. The first seal of the tribulation is not unleashed until Revelation 6. So all of a sudden they're up here before the tribulation. What does that mean then? Now I know that you don't want to say it, but that's what it means. It means a pre-tribulation rapture. Sorry. But scripture is scripture. It should be very obvious when you see this. I mean, you see seven spirits down here, then all of a sudden they're up there. You see uh, people who act like churches and 24 elders who are assimilated with them, all of a sudden they're down here and then they're up there. You know? 
Okay, now let's look at chapter 4 again. And before the throne, ooh, this is going to be fun. There was a sea of glass like unto crystal. So there's a sea of glass right before the throne. That's why I drew this in blue. Look at this. What in the world? There's a sea of glass that's before the throne, right in the presence before the throne. And in the midst of the throne, the middle of the throne, and round about the throne, so in the middle of the throne and around the throne, there were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Now all of a sudden, this is getting weird and weirder, right? So then all of a sudden now, you got four beasts surrounding the throne, and they were full of eyes within and behind, right? So I don't know how I'm going to draw these eyes. I'm just going to draw circles like this, all right? Use your imagination. All right. So there were four of them, though. So then there's one over here, another one over here, and another one over here. It says round about the throne, right? Yeah. Now, this is something right here. Okay. One at a time, preacher. Ah! What is this, and what is this? All right. Let's cover the sea of glass. Let's look at uh, Genesis chapter 1. You just got to start at the beginning, right? Amen. Genesis chapter 1. Let's start at the beginning. People don't pay attention when they read the Bible. Churches and pastors, they lost studying the scriptures. It's just little ditty devotionals. Let's look at Genesis chapter 1. There's so much to learn over here. Notice the second day of God's creation here. Well, let's first start off at verse 2. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. That's waters. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Okay, that's plain. That's waters. So notice right here, there's waters covering everywhere. Now notice what God did. The Bible says, And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Okay, wherever this is, there's waters everywhere, okay? Okay, with waters everywhere over here, God has to split this, correct? If he's going to split this, he says, let there be a firmament in the what? Where, where in the waters? It says midst, right? So then it's going to have to be in the middle. Let's keep reading. And let it divide. See, uh, picture this. Let it divide the waters from the waters. See that? So there's a division right here. Rightly dividing. See, like dispensationalism. See? See, you got to rightly divide. Why do we divide? Why do we separate? Why don't we unite? Why, why are we intolerant? Why do we not compromise? Why are we so divisive? See, it's because it's a biblical thing ever since Genesis chapter 1. That's why. It's a biblical thing to separate, to divide. Because, why does God do that? Because if everybody is the same, then we live in a strange, funny, chaotic world. God divided everyone with their own gift, personality, different calling, the way God set things in orders, the way he wanted to be done. All right? It's like that God did not call Moses to slay a giant. He called David, and God did not call David to lead a million people through the wilderness. God said everybody divided them Amen. at the right order. That's why we believe in rightly dividing. Let it divide the waters from the waters. So then this, this is the firmament then, right? It says a firmament in the midst. So whatever divided these waters is known as the firmament. Then what happened to these waters? It's like there's one on top, one on the bottom, right? Verse 7, And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament, see, and the waters, uh, excuse me, from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. Okay, so this makes sense so far, right? Waters below here, waters above firmament, right? Yeah. 
Okay, now let's see what happens. Let's uh, look at verse 8. And God called the firmament what? Heaven. heaven. Okay, so he calls this heaven. Now, well, where do these waters go? Let's keep reading. Just read your Bible and calm down. All right, let's look at uh, verse 9. And God said, let the waters under the what? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Waters below the firmament, a.k.a. heaven, right? Yep. Oh, then we know what these waters are. Let the waters under the heaven, keep reading right here, be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called the what? Seas. And God saw that it was good. Oh, then we know what this water is below the firmament. This water below the firmament is referring to earth right here, the sea. What did God called it? Sea. God called it sea. Well, wait a minute. What did he call this one above the... Isn't the sea of glass before the throne? Yes, sir. Okay. Isn't the sea of glass above the firmament? Yes. Yeah. And what is it called? Oh, and notice who called it sea. God called it sea. Okay, there's your answer. Wow. Who made up this doctrine? And No, this is not made up. This is scripture. If you just really read it as it says, it becomes obvious. But if you want to make it more obvious, let's keep reading here. Let's look at chapter 1 and verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the what? Firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give what? Light upon the earth and it was so. And God uh, made two great lights, a greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in where? The firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. Oh, now we know what the firmament is. It's all the way up here in the universe. There you go. There's your sun, moon, and stars. You know that song, he's still working on me. Took him just a week to make the moon and stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. Loving and patient he must be. He's still working on me. There really ought to be a sign upon my heart. Don't judge her yet. There's an unfinished part. Okay, I better stop right there. Okay. But anyway, so it's, it's a catchy song. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So notice right here, see, this is where it is, where the universe is at. So the seas right here is earth and the sea above at heaven. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Well, I, well then, wait a minute. That doesn't make sense right here. So let's look at over here at verse mm, 20. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Uh, let's see right here. Uh, I wanted to find another one. Okay, verse 28. And God blessed them and said, God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So you'll notice right here that this is called heaven, right? But you'll notice also that uh, the fowls of the air, where they're flying at, this can also refer to as heaven as well. If you look at, uh, I want to show you other verses in the Bible, but I don't know from memory. But look at other verses in the Bible that talks about rain. And it'll say that it'll come from heaven. So it's referring to the air. So this is called heaven, this is called heaven. And then the official heaven itself is right here, right? Well, I don't believe in three heavens. Where did you get that from? Oh. Did you read 2 Corinthians chapter 12? What did Paul say? I went up to the what? Third heaven. Oh, isn't it amazing how the scriptures click everything together and answer your questions. Aren't you glad you're in a Bible-believing church service today? Yes. Not, not at a charismatic church service speaking in tongues or doing little ditty devotional sharing things. You're missing out, man. You're missing out.
If only more people would attend a Bible-believing church, amen? That way they can grow more. They can understand the scriptures and be blessed. Okay, so this makes a lot of sense. All right, now let's go back. I already filled out the whole board, so I don't know if I'm going to make some room here. Now let's talk about the four living creatures. Truly, that's why the Bible says up in heaven, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. That's why this is deep already. This is already deep. Why? Because it's something that our human mind and eyes cannot fathom. See? Let me tell you something. Despite of everything that I drew out for you, that verse is still true. You've seen nothing yet. Yeah, amen. Get ready to be blown away at the rapture, man. 